Huh? Oh, hey Ludo. You've got me in a state of unease, delirium, befuddled This thing, this bloody thing, I just don't get it. Every design decision they've made utterly confuses me. Oh, no, I don't hate it. In fact, I actually like parts of it. I just loathe the others. So this episode's gonna be a little bit ranty, so strap yourselves in and welcome to Design Dump. So Dragon's Dogma 2 is an RPG that's attempting to do something interesting by approaching its mechanics, dialogue and even its basic interactions in a unique way, but falls flat onto its face for 90% of this experimentation. And most of the time, I'm an advocate for thinking outside of the design box, but here it's like they've attempted to change things, well, because. And not the type of because, because they had a reason, but because, well, because? Yeah, don't worry, my meds are on the way. Let's start by trying to be fair and find something positive to share. Um, uh, um, character creation is incredibly diverse, allowing its players to craft the likeness of practically anyone they want. Look at this, or even this. So for my artistic endeavors, I wanted to create a cat that had been stung by a bee in the chest. My main goals were to capture its pain and swollen top half. Yeah, I think I nailed it too, cheers. You can also do this level of customization for your pawn companions too. Meet Cleft. To be honest, pawns might be one of the most unique aspects of this game's design and probably my favorite. You create these little followers that accompany you on your adventures, but they can also venture off to help other players in their own playthroughs too, collecting gold, items and even knowledge of areas and monsters to bring back to you and your game based on their own adventures. Legit, super unique. Mechanically, you can give them commands, come here, help or go, which seems simple on face value, but the level of depth here is honestly outstanding. For the go command, for example, the pawns will actively explore for you, looting chests, eradicating enemies, or even suggesting what way to go. Depending on their class and traits, they will actively pursue their best positioning, strategy, and combos, making engaging in combat with them incredibly seamless. But, oh, shit. Yeah, we're completely out, leads. Out of positives. All that's left at the bottom of this jar is a black sludge that just says combat? Huh. Now, there's no denying that Dragon's Dogma's combat does have its moments. In fact, people are striving to find that moment at all costs. That one memorable flash of emergent systems blending that is perfect to plast on Twitter. The game is tailor-made in such a way to create these moments. Being able to pick up enemies, be picked up, climb, collapse, and interrupt. All of these systems create the combat sandbox needed to craft these memorable moments that feel so wholly unique, but this is all a form of manufactured Ludo narrative. No, not you. Manufactured Ludo narrative is where designers corral players or manufacture an event to transpire that feels completely unique to the player, but in reality isn't. This can be done with things as simple as invisible manipulations of how we display player health bars, or as intense as manipulating entire scenes to transpire how we desire. For a dogma example, we can look to the falling trolls. If the stars align, a troll can stumble and become a makeshift bridge. And this is incredibly cool and feels so natural, but when it happens, the conditions needed to have it appear are manufactured and encouraged. There's nothing wrong with manufacturing this type of event. I, I don't have an issue with it at all. I just have an issue with how frequently they do it. As in, they don't do it enough. These moments are so few and far between that I would have preferred if the boss fights were a little bit more scripted in a way to see them more consistently because everything to do with the combat in between is just clunky. Enemies barely react to your advances. Attacks feel ineffective, like you're flailing in enemy directions attempting to pass where they are because there's no standard targeting system because early levels of combat is like sitting down for tea with your mum. Oh, mother dearest, can I please have a cool moment with a boss for Dindins? And she rolls the dice and just says, Nah, you're getting spam and you'll like it. Uh, well, I didn't know if this level of spammage was due to the melee system, so I wanted to try out the magic system, and that was a mistake. You can freely switch between these vocations, but certain armor can't be used by other vocations, so when you switch, the game gives you new armor needed for that class. But now, you're over encumbered, so my pawn politely offered to sell off some junk so that we could free up some space, and I thought she'd sell, you know, the bones and rags I got off the many goblins I killed, but she sold everything. The bitch sold my shoes! And after all of that, 
The magic system didn't fare much better. Buffing my pawns was an interesting addition, but the moment to moment gameplay was somehow even more spammy. This seems to be a running theme with how Dragon's Dogma controls. Something just feels off. There seems to be a lack of conventional designs such as targeting or universal dodge systems because not wanting to be compared to other nameless titles or just to be different. But this leads to even the most mundane tasks being made needlessly difficult, even down to how the controls are mapped to the controller itself. For example, unsheathing your weapon takes up the entire L2 button while it could just be tied to combat initiation, whilst also giving some actions two buttons based on context. For example, running. Why is sprint on the left stick in, but also B, which is also the same button used for all interactions? Meaning once I've killed an enemy and I want to loot them, I just end up sprinting into oblivion if I'm not perfectly still. Now, I sympathize with compartmentalization, trying to condense controls to make them easier to comprehend, but why have two buttons for it then anyway, and then not compartmentalize the other controls like sheathing? Everything from the combat to how the player controls just feels distant, disconnected, and this horrible feeling extends into how the narrative is delivered as well. When interacting with NPCs, it's a dice roll between what flavour of jank you'll receive. Sometimes it puts you into a basic, uncontrollable cutscene that leads straight into a chase sequence without warning, but most of the time it puts you into these weird dialogue-centric cutscenes where you can't control anything, but you have to press next whenever someone has finished their sentence, regardless of whether there's a player choice or not. Now for context, I play with subtitles off, so this would lead to these awkward pauses while I wait to see if they've actually finished talking, which was only exacerbated by this terrible lip syncing that continues long after the characters finish muttering their drivel. You want to simply rest it in in? Okay, go through the motions and put the controller down for a second, but your character waxes lyrically about how much they love sleep, ironically not going to bed till you've picked the controller back up just to confirm that you've heard it. What's the opposite of seamless? Shitful? Yeah, right, that's this. It really doesn't help matters that you're going to be hearing these same lines over and over and over again because of how this game manages its save system. Anyone who is familiar with this show would have instantly seen this save system and thought one thing, motherfucking reinforcement loop. When you die, the game gives you two options, respawn at the last rest of that in or reload from an autosave. But here's the rub. Each time you reload an autosave, you lose around 10% of your total health as a punishment, making it harder to actually tackle the task that, you know, killed you in the first place. This is a reinforcement loop. Failure makes it harder to succeed. I did this when I died to a troll at night. I reused the autosave to not lose too much progress, but then the autosave immediately saved when I encountered the troll. So I got stuck in this never ending loop of attempting to fight this beast, it getting harder and harder after each reload, me and my pawns spamming away attempting to whittle it down. So I finally attempted to mount it and instantly died. And I thought, Fuck it, there's no way I can do this, so I'll just respawn back at the last in save. But it turns out that the last in I rested that was about two and a half hours ago. And at this point I said, fuck that, I'm just gonna go play something that respects my time. Because that's my core issue here. Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't respect its player time or their efforts. See the lack of teleportation, trudging through the world, or the game's arguably insane microtransactions, on top of having to wait for something cool to maybe happen during combat? This could have been something special if they streamlined the experience and focused on what worked, but instead they drew it out to impossible lengths. The whole experience feeling all thin, sort of stretched if you know what I mean, like butter that has been scraped over too much. Oh fuck, she deleted the bread out my inventory again. Uh, uh, but what do you think? What were your personal experiences with Dogma's combat and design quirks? Do you think they're dog shit or are you dogmatic about them? Let us know down below because we would love to discuss this with you. Well, that was certainly something. I might give you the brains next week, Ludo, and see if we can talk about something positive. What do you want to talk about? Estus flasks. Okay, um, say goodbye. Alright, see you next time guys.